Okay, 2.2, solving quadratics by factoring. Okay, so let's just read over this real quick. Um, when we're talking about solving something by factoring, there's two ideas that we need to do. One is that we can write a quadratic expression as a product of two binomial factors. So we're going to need to be able to do that, how to factor a trinomial. We did that last chapter. Um, and then the other thing is this fundamental idea that if you multiply any factor <clears throat> um, by zero, you always end up with a zero. So what that lets you do is when you get to this factored form equals zero, that tells you that either x plus two equals zero or x minus three equals zero. See, so one of these has to be equal to zero. So you, what you do is you set them both equal to zero and then solve both equations. Here, what would make um, this whole thing equal zero? What would be the opposite of two, right? It'd be negative two. And what would make this equal zero? Well, it'd be the opposite of negative three, so it'd be x equals three. So we're going to remember how to factor, and then we're going to use the zero product property to solve. Eventually, this will just be really easy for you because you'll just see, hey, it's just the opposites of these numbers in there. But um, I'll show you how to do all this. So let's go to example number one. It says solve for x. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is factor this. So we need something that multiplies up to 30 and adds up to 13. Um, should be an easy one, 10 and 3. So I can write this as x plus 10 x plus 3 still equals 0. Since these two things are being multiplied together and they equal 0, the only way I get 0 is if one of these things are 0, or both of them are 0. So I'm going to say, hey, x plus 10 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. Now I'm just going to solve for x in both equations. So if I subtract 10 from both sides, subtract 10, I get x equals negative 10. Okay, so there's one of my solutions. Same thing over here, subtract 3, subtract 3, and I get x equals negative 3. And now I have solved it. Okay, there's my solutions. I'm done. x equals negative 10 and x equals negative 3. Note that the factors that we got, the, it's the opposite of those that are really our answers. So that's going to be helpful. Um, eventually, we might be able to just, just shortcut this whole process and just know that these, the opposite of those factors are going to be my answers. Um, but for now, this is the math behind y. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and practice number one, uh, or do practice number one. Remember to factor, set it equal to zero, and then solve both parts. I'll let you guys go ahead and do that, and then um, you can check back or unpause the video once you're done. Okay, so <clears throat> I factored it. I need something to multiply it to negative 32 and 4. I got 8 and negative 4, so my factor is x plus 8, x minus 4. Set both of those equal to 0 because this is still equal to 0. So that means either this is 0 or this is 0 or both are 0. And we're going to solve for both. So I get x equals negative 8 here. I get x equals positive 4 here. And once again, look, they're the opposites of the factors I got here. All right. <clears throat> Let's do... Um, example two. On these ones, it says, remember to pull out the greatest common factor first when you can. Okay, so these first ones, you can pull out a greatest common factor. Um, what I want you to see here is, if we were to pull out, and the greatest common factor here is four, we'd get x squared plus 2x um, minus 48 equals zero. Now, this is what's kind of nice about these types of problems. Once you already have it set equal to zero, look what we can do to get, get rid of this four. If I was to divide both sides by 4, those just cancel each other out. So on the left, I'm left with x squared plus 2x minus 48. And 0 divided by 4 is just 0. So this, this thing is going to have the same solutions as this thing. So this is much simpler to solve. So we're going to solve this one instead. We've proven that it still equals 0, so that's fine. So we need a factor. Again, we need something that multiplies up to 48 and adds up to 2. I'm thinking 6 and 8 multiply up to 48, but to get a positive 2, I'm going to have to subtract, subtract negative 6. So my factors are x minus 6 and x plus 8 equals 0. And I could solve each of these, set them each equal to 0 and solve, or I could just see, hey, these, it's going to be the opposite of those factors there. So my solutions are going to be 6 and negative 8. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and do practice number two, see what you can take out of both sides first, and then divide both sides by that number to simplify it. All right, so when we factor out a six, 
We divide both sides by 6, and we're left with x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals 0. That we can factor down to x plus 8, x minus 3, and therefore our solutions are the opposites of 8 and negative 3, which is negative 8 and positive 3. All right, we got one more here. Um, this one we're going to have to factor using the star method. So we're going to do 2 times negative 15 up top, negative 30, and on the bottom we're going to put negative 7. Remember, we're going to have to divide by 2. We need something that multiplies up to negative 30 but adds up to negative 7. I'm thinking 10 and 3 multiply up to 30, and if we made it a negative 10 and a positive 3, that would make it negative 30. This reduces down to negative 5. This does not reduce, so we could just leave it... Actually, we could just leave it like this. These are our opposite answers. So we could say um, that x equals, instead of negative 5, one of our answers is going to be positive 5. And instead of x equals 3 halves, we could say negative 3 halves. We could verify this by just taking our factors, x minus 5, set it equal to 0, and 2x plus 3, because we do the bottoms up method, set that equal to 0. And if you were to solve both of these, you would get these answers. But I would recommend just taking these factors and just changing the signs, and you're done. So go ahead and try practice number three on your own. Pause the video and then come back to see um, how I did it. Okay, I'm going to stop here just because this is can kind of a hard problem for some people to do, kind of a hard factoring problem, but it's, it's really not that bad, but I know that students are going to get stuck on this. So I did 6 times negative 35 to put my negative 210 up here, to my, put my B term down here. I know I'm going to divide by 6, divide by 6. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply up to negative 210, but add up to 37. Well, what I've done, because there's so many factors of 210, is I actually listed them all out. And I'm just going to go through all these and real quickly see which one do I think would add up to 37. By the way, I put all the negatives on the smaller numbers because I know that when I add them together, my answer is going to be positive. Therefore, the bigger number has to be positive. So, which ones look like they might give me 37? Uh, no, no, no maybe. Let's try it. 42 minus 5. Yep, that's 37. So there we go. I found it. So I listed all the factors first. Then I went through to check and see which ones add up to 37. So we could write this. Let's go ahead and put negative 5 and 42. This one does not, does not reduce nicely. So we would just say 6x minus 5 is one of my factors. And 42 divided by 6 does reduce down to 7, so we could say that x plus 7 is one of my factors. If I was to solve this, I would get that x equals 5 over 6 and x equals negative 7. Remember, these both equal 0. Okay, but again, look, 5, 6, that's the opposite of negative 5, 6. Um, 7, that's the opposite of negative 7. That's why the star method is really handy, because it gives you your solutions quickly. So that's how I'd recommend doing it. All right, um, see you guys on the next video.